Uh, good morning, everybody, and it's a great pleasure to be here. I'm slightly nervous because any Welsh audience thinks that anything coming out of England can't be all that great by definition. <laughs> and thank God it's not Thursday afternoon. Uh, <laughs> So I'm pleased. I was, of course, uh, very sensible and married a, a Welsh wife, a Welsh-speaking wife from Carmarthen and Clan Stephen. So I have some induction uh, into into the way. To, and of course, I was invited to uh, two years ago to setting up a challenge Kumbu, which is took some of the learning from London Challenge. So I have some identification, but. Uh, uh, forgive me, suspend your disbelief that anything good can come out of England in terms of education. Um, I want to address this issue because London particularly, and England to some extent, has been working at this school improvement system. You will get these slides as we go along. And I just want to share our learning. Uh, I, we would admit, well, I think we're going to talk about creativity later on today, and, and you're way ahead of London, England, and creativity, for example. So it's just an exchange of best practice across two countries, and no doubt across the world with our other speakers. So um, let me just go back to that, the new, um, yeah, the new landscape. Um, an OECD quote. I've just come from a conference where we had OECD in the Institute of Education in London, which is parallel, I suppose, a very, very good parallel, which is the lung of London in terms of our research, our data, and, and works very well with all our schools. So the OECD and London system leaders, we call them the system leaders. They are head teachers, of course, but we like they, they do the two things. So that's an interesting thing in Wales. Could we call our principals and head teachers? both heads of their schools and system leaders in Wales and that's where we've got to in London. So obviously that's a quote that could apply to individual schools, it could apply to nations, it could apply to regions. Uh, I think London is a reasonable parallel, there are 2,500 schools in London and just short of 2,000 in Wales. So it's a, obviously it's a dense urban area as opposed to a rural, many, many rural areas but nevertheless it's a on scale terms, it, it's a parallel. Um, so, so what is it? What is it? I think let's define our terms. That's what we mean by a self-improving school system. I've got two slides on this. You may mean something different. So I think it's important when we we put these phrases out that we define our terms. For us, uh, and for England as a whole, I think it, it would mean it would mean these the following things. And I hope you can see it from the from the screens. I think I would have thought in Wales you would accept that, that we want, as Steve just said, leaders, teachers and schools to learn from each other much better. Um, we want the best schools and leaders to extend their reach across the system. We don't want them to stay at home. We want them to work across, either in your four regions or your local authorities, or whichever structures you've got. And we want this huge focus on collaboration and partnerships and, and share and share the very best practice. So on this last conference, we had interesting speakers from, from OECD that drew a vertical line and said, well, there, there will be governments, and they're democratically elected, they're entitled to set forward the expectations of the nation, that's fine. So we'll all have national governments at the vertical line. They will all have a sort of regulatory framework, usually through an inspection system, Eston in your case, and they may work, work down to, traditionally through a local thought and then, and then of course, uh, to the schools. But of course, we want to change that. We'll still have a vertical line, but we want a very strong horizontal line. We want, when that line works, we believe in London, the best learning, the best way to improve outcomes for our children and young people is to have that strong horizontal line. And the OECD were presenting various countries that had a strong vertical line, weak horizontal line, or the others. And of course, it's the best combination. It seems to me you're working towards strengthening your horizontal line. You know exactly what the Welsh Government wants. You've got, you've got those expectations. But in London, because we've been at this 10 years, and so therefore it does take time to do it. To, to, so what I would give you a definition of a mature something perhaps you could look ahead towards. I'm not suggesting that it isn't there already. Now we worked hard at moral purpose. So a London, when, when you're introduced to a London principal or teacher, and incidentally, 
uh, some of our best teachers and leaders are Welsh, of course, in London. So thank you for that uh, export. And they're not coming back, no, they're staying. Well, they may be coming back the way things are going in England. They may want to come back. But um, we've worked at moral purpose. So when, you, when a London, they'll say to you, and they go out to speak in other parts of our country, they will say, I'm a London head. Meaning, or oh, I'm a London teacher. And then they might say, I'm the head of X or Y. And I think that's the difference. In other words, uh, it's the collective moral purpose. As a principal or head teacher in London, I care, I care, of course. My first responsibility is the children and young people in my school. But I have a second responsibility is what can I do for the children of London? And you could translate that, yes, my first school, but what can I offer? And that horizontal line to the children and young people uh, well, and that's very well established. Uh, you won't, and of course, our new leaders have been brought up now for 10 years in that tradition. So they assume they're going to be system leaders as well as school leaders. And then this business of joint practice development now maturing very well because governments can do can say all they like and the inspection frameworks can say all they like but unless schools work with schools day by day unless teachers work with teachers in other schools day by day then we're not going to get remarkable change of outcomes that we've had in London over these last few years. And that's the gold dust of the system. I know it's easier in London because you want to do an excellence visit, you jump on the tube, you're there in 10 minutes. And of course, if you wanted to visit the very best practice in Wales, it may be way up in North Wales and that might be difficult in terms of transportation uh, systems. So joint practice development is the, so all the time we've got, we've got into a position where our schools are visiting each other all the time. And of course, data helps. If we are told that the best, I don't know, the best primary literacy scores or outcomes are in these group of schools, then go and visit them, learn from them. If the best science department is in uh, this group of schools or the best science, go and see it. Um, I, the challenge is, of course, I say this, I said this because I was speaking in Denmark recently, and I said, does Denmark know what Denmark knows? And I might say, does Wales know what Wales knows? In other words, does it know where the very best, most outstanding practice is? And if it did that, then your schools hopefully uh, would, would seek it out. Uh, at the moment, we know it anecdotally, we know it through groups of people who, who, who heard it. We might know it from Estin reports, but we don't know it in the depth we should know. So, in a sense, London's lucky, you can push buttons and say, oh, I see, I know outcomes change every year, but they can see over, over time, the, you talked about planning, we would talk about centres of excellence. Uh, you go to, for example, if you want to see the best examples of deprivation and huge outcomes, you'd go to the most deprived borough in London, which would be the famous borough of Tower Hamlets. Two thirds of the children on preschool meals. Uh, sometimes 80% English is an additional language, and yet knocking out outcomes far above the national averages. Should you want to get a taste of well, how do they do it, wouldn't you? Uh, that's just an example. So social capital is high. None of this, the horizontal line is thriving. None of this hierarchical business. We visit each other to find out that get, we get the best out of each other. And it's not just a question of test outcomes. It may be that's the best school for art or drama, that's the best school in relating to parents, that's the best school for dealing with vulnerable children, as well as, of course, the more traditional ways of being. So evaluation and challenge is practiced at every level, and I do mean evaluation and challenge, I'll come back to that. It's when we vi any visit, they're grateful and they're nice to each other, but they do say, well, I don't quite know why we do it that way, and, and so there is a good debate going on. But most of all, outward looking and forward linking leadership. Um, so, so therefore, we talk all the time. And I chair something called now, the successor to the London challenge is uh, the London leadership strategy. Um, and we talk all the time of how we get system leadership to work. And, and I'll go back to that in a way. And incidentally, the London leadership strategy is completely run by head teachers. I chair it, but I have 15 of the very best London heads who know where all the bodies are buried and where all the issues are. And will say, in other words, we are a, 
the, as I've often said, we're the best dating agency in London. We can, we can put any school to any school in a very supportive, horizontal way. We've had to train our system leaders not to go into schools, of course, and say, as an outstanding school, uh, oh, well, we'll stand back, we'll show you how to do it, which is exactly what you don't want to do. We've had to train them hard to go in with all humility, build trust, and say, well, we, we're a bit better than this and this. My first lesson to train on that horizontal line is to, is to say to those best schools or outstanding schools, find something in the school you're going to which does things something better than you. And there's always something they do better. Take back the letter and then talk about how you can help. What we, call, we used to call tugboats. The tugboat school is just helping the underperforming or weaker school to come into the safe harbor. That's the tugboat, but it's not taking them over, it's the tugboat. And we now, of course, use other a different, different language. So I won't go through the quotations, you can see what they are, but the last few lines from David Hargreaves, disciplined innovation. We like to talk about disciplined innovation because a ca cautionary note, everybody's chasing best practice and everybody thinks they've got the best and actually it isn't. So we insist on, uh, if a school puts itself up, its case studies, the best practice to be visited, we insist it produces the evidence. It's had an Ofsted inspection, it's had a review, it's, got ev it's had a university link to, to validate it. So it is, we don't want people wasting their time and saying, the last thing in the world you want from the horizontal line is schools losing schools uh, because they told us, and then they come away, you must be joking, sunshine, you think that's best practice. So we don't want that sort of, uh, we want to make sure it's highly focused and worth doing. So disciplined innovation, high leverage best practice, we call it. Because you could, we could talk forever about best practice, but the best practice makes a difference quickly. High leverage, because at the end of the day, we can have any structures in the world, but the judge of any education system are the outcomes for its children and young people. I mean, a broad set of outcomes. So there's no point in investing time and effort in this if we haven't got the interest of our children and young people at our heart. That's what we're about. Otherwise, it becomes some sort of closed in game, doesn't it? We're about doing that. So, um, so what does it do? Well, you know, um, Sorry, I should have gone on for that. Um, what does it do? Um, well, we would say it does something like that. Uh, in our, we keep looking at this and we keep working with, uh, we've got um, 32 local authorities, of course, and we've got lots of different systems. We've got lots of infrastructures which are different, but it's the same principles. We've got nearly 100 what we, I'm not sure what pioneer schools quite are, if I was honest, but we've got nearly 100 teaching schools, which are hubs of the very best practice. And we've got lots of federations and collaboratives and trusts, and, and that's how we work through and with them, with our 32 local authorities. So that's what we all subscribe to. Uh, so whatever the infrastructure, we want to make change happen. And frankly, the only people who can make change happen are those uh, on the front line, as it says, on keep the work where it needs to be, close to the front line. Yes, we need our support from our universities and our authorities and our systems, but keep it close to the front line. Shared endeavor, climate for improvement, and of course, influence the system at a horizontal level, but also push up vertically. Say to uh, uh, the English government, say to them, well, actually, we're doing all this, and, and why don't you change your legislation? So that there could be an upward vertical line as well as a very strong horizontal line. And, and of course, if you achieve the outcomes that London's managed to do, people do listen then and they say, oh, well, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you are doing it the right way. Although, nothing wells, I'm sure, but in England, our governments are sometimes prone to certain ideologies that maybe <laughs> don't work well with a, a school-led system. I will say no more. I'm no longer working for the Department of Education, so I, I'm free to say what I like on it. But, just a, an idea of what we call systemic, uh, sorry, I'll keep forgetting to press it on, systemic leadership. And really, we want to get beyond the head teachers, with all due respect to senior leaders that are in the room, and get to uh, the real expert practitioners. 
who do the business day in and day out and, and literally do transform children's lives and life chances. And to get to them, we want them, as it says, without reading it out, uh, we want them to uh, practice uh, joint practice development. Um, and they like it, they observe, evaluate, reflect. Teachers learn best from teachers, actually. If you've got a, the most best expert in early years or literacy in primary, and you want to go for a workshop or listen, you visit their school for a morning, they learn so quickly from that in terms of pedagogy and practice. Of course, theory is important. Of course, other support's important. But actually, real-time learning, teacher to teacher, teaching assistant, teaching assistant, whatever it might be, is the goal of us as our system. And so I think we've now pushed on. We've gone deeper and wider from leadership to systemic leadership because we regard all teachers are leaders, all teachers have something to offer, but they need to be recognized by the system as expert practitioners. Now, some are not as expert as others, and we have a way which, as I wouldn't I want to say here, because you're fairly anti-hierarchical in Wales, this is fairly hierarchical, we do have um, specialist leaders of education who are expert teachers, and we recognize about them. And we, we say we expect you to do this. But we've got other teachers who don't have a label, but it's well known that they're worth, they're worth talking or visiting to. So that's a little word about going deeper and wider if you're going to build the self-improving system. I've got to watch the time, so I've got to allow Debbie 10 minutes, haven't I, to come back at this. So, so what are these dimensions that we practice? Now you could say these are dimensions, the head teachers in the room will say, well that could apply to me in, in, in running my school. I've got six things, and this is part of our training for system leaders. We do invest a lot in them. We, of, of course there are head teachers and teachers who are naturally communicators, who win the confidence and trust of other people naturally. But it can't be, it's not a given that they can easily go into uh, another school or another setting and, and, you know, be very effective. So we do invest a lot. One of our ways is, uh, this comes from our Cabinet Office Innovation Unit, actually. It's a sort of, it's popularly known as the nudge unit. The nudge, you've probably heard about the nudge, right? We nudge them to it, nudge them to it. But the six things, I won't go through them, you'd recognize them. Um, We've got to start with the moral purpose, the personal core values. I think that idea of observing from the balcony as well as the dance floor is very good. And you've got to do that as a head teacher. You observe the whole thing, but you're dipping in onto the dance floor, aren't you? And, I ca and then that's for a system leader. Uh, as a system leader, we're working from the balcony uh, in our own school on the dance floor. All those sensitivities to other narratives, you don't understand this area, David, that the children here are this. I guess you get it in Wales. You really ought to come here because the children are special and different here. They can't learn as well. And you get all that. It takes the hell out of me uh, because, of course, they can. Of course, they can learn perfectly well if we get the right learning right. Um, and I, we don't, they don't say that. And frankly, if any London teacher ever said any, ever again, as they did 10 years ago, what more can we do with children like these? We'd send them to the Tower of London, I think, uh, and keep them. And they wouldn't say that. They might feel it occasionally, but they wouldn't say it. Because they know on the data, on the bench, we've got very high benchmark data, that other schools five miles down the road are doing twice as well with children like these. So, and when I go to our northern cities, the Bradfords and the Sheffields and Manchesters, who are not doing very well, by the way, and they tell me, oh, you don't understand, you can't do it, you can't. And I say, come with me to Inner London and Tower Hamlets. It's almost like playing, who's the most deprived game, you know? <laughs> who's the most deprived? Uh, and, and of course, spectacular outcomes. So, ways of thinking, uh, ways of doing, of course, and trying to reframe it. I won't go into details, haven't got the time. Very important ways of relating. What binds them together is a sense of place, and that's your great, your great uh, uh, advantage. Wales is a very proud cultural nation. We're not a nation; we're just a region. And you've got that sense of place and identity far better. But we worked hard on a sense of place. So in London, yes, you serve your school, you serve your community, you serve your borough, you serve the capital city. So a sense of place is powerful in terms of relation. What binds us together and what binds you together is your 
your national culture. And in London, we built up this sense of pride and sense of purpose. So we call it pl Place, Pride and Purpose. So you could adopt that, couldn't you? Place, Pride, Purpose. Um, and that's how it plays. And ways of being, and of course, that applies to you as leaders. We all have to practice resilience and drive and optimism. Optimism is a very important thing, isn't it, for any school leader? We believe in optimism. Uh, you know, you're not allowed, even if it's unrealistic optimism, you're not allowed to be pessimistic. But once a school leader is anywhere near pessimistic, then you forget the whole thing, can't you? So I know I'm accused often of being an unrealistic optimist, but I know it, it can happen because we've got the evidence over 10 years. You can transform schools, you can transform communities. Not pretending that everything's been transformed, but the data is compelling from the worst performing region in England to the top most performing region in England. So the six features, and I've put it up generally, but I think this will be London, but it may be our top six will be these. And I've just, I've just obviously could write 500 pages on this stuff, but I've just, uh, sorry, I haven't moved it on, have I? Um, will be these. Obviously, we, the, great, the great system of London Challenge was its direct school to school support. Any school in London could get support immediately for whatever. If they had to ring the strategy or talk to their fellows, can I have, I need desperately some help with phonics or literacy, or I need it in primary, or I need desperately help with a subject area, or I need some way of getting the community on board or working with parents better, or helping my special education needs children. It's there. Now, of course, you have to be intellectually curious to go and want it, and we still have heads that can keep their heads down, you see what I mean? Until Estim comes and exposes them, or, or they keep, and I hope not too much now. I think people have got their heads up because asking for help is not a shame, is it? Asking for help is what we want. We want everybody helps each other. That's the best of a cooperative system. So I hope we don't have much left of heads down. We may have, may have one or two. So direct school to school support, in, in, whether that's mooring alongside the school and giving really sustaining help over a year or so, or whether that is more focused perhaps for a few weeks and a few excellence visits or whatever it might be. Obviously professional learning programs which we work with our universities on. So if you want a program, if you want to, if you are, uh, uh, in, I don't know what Estin does in its grades, but in England if you're a required improvement school and you want to be good, you can go on a RI to good program and you work with Her, Her Majesty's inspectors, they come along every so often and we go through the units and they're given a, a consultant leader who's an outstanding leader to work with. So, so that, that builds that system and now London has got itself to I think 87% good and outstanding. We have four grades, outstanding, good, requiring improvement, special measures. So 87% uh, good and outstanding is quite a remarkable system. Though London remains fragile, and, and those, those, uh, and of course, Ofsted keeps changing its framework, so it gets harder. So the, it's a perverse system, isn't it? You do so well on the system, that Ofsted say it must be too easy. This we're giving too high a grades. We'll have to tighten up here and change the criteria. There you are. Joint practice development. I've talked about a very, very vibrant system of uh, of networks and joint practice. Peer review, very big in London where schools actually review each other. They don't wait for the government or Estin to do it, they review each other. Um, and that can, that, could be easy. that can be very uh, challenging because actually you've got to be trust, haven't you, to say to another school, come in, turn us over, in the nicest sense, it's not an inspection, it's a review. But nevertheless, at the end of the review, your colleagues because typically another four senior leaders would come in for two days, and then you, it's a corporate system, but you get the same thing. You put one in, get one out. But actually, taking the messages from your peer colleagues, that actually, of course, there will be praise, acknowledgement, a lot, but the hard message, well, actually, we've been in your school today, and we didn't think the behavior is what it should be. That's a tough message for a colleague. You have to trust that. Uh, that said in the right sense, not in, a, not in an inspection sense, sense but we, we have noted that if you could do this and you could do that, whatever. So peer review, excellence visits I've talked about, very popular, half a day only, let's come and see the best, let's take away the learning, 
it's very interesting now in London that, uh, that, that people are com very competitive about excellence. I've been mean, hosting excellence visits. You might think it's a chore. Oh, why can't we put up with this lot? I want to get on what we're doing. But actually, it's got really competitive. So they now put on learning breakfast. And, uh, you know, the whole, the whole thing is so they want to prove that they gave other schools the best yeah. learning experience. And they want to send them away with a lovely pack of materials and resources. So that's good sharing, isn't it? Managing and sharing knowledge, the holy grail. We were talking with the OECD about, I suppose in the academic phrase, is knowledge mobilization. How do you mobilize the knowledge? How do you share it? Well, that's how we do it. We make them, and I have to say, it has been a make them, we can't make them anything, but we suggest very strongly that, they, that if you have best practice, we're not going to recognize it unless you've written a case study. And frankly, teachers have very little time to write, have they? It's one of the big things that Tim Brighouse always says, that uh, actually teachers writing is something that we, we need to find time. And maybe the universities, because a lot of our schools have got university partners. But case studies, or what sometimes they're called learning narratives. Blogs are big, of course, uh, social media. Which, so we expect these schools to blog. If you can't write a case study, write a series of blogs, websites, and of course, teach meets, which are very popular in London, where they meet all the time. And often they Twitter to each other and whatever. So we mustn't forget social media in this. I think we're a bit behind. We administrators are a bit behind on the potential of social media in terms of the interchange of the very best practice. Uh, so managing and sharing knowledge is, is not easy. Does Wales know what Nails knows? And how, how, how do we get that shared? Um, uh, three, however, it, it's all very well to talk about this, but I want to, want to look at um, three challenges, because it's all very well, and I've given possibly a, a, quite an optimistic, optimistic because of the outcomes are so good, and you can look at them for themselves, and by the way, the London Challenge of Leadership has been evaluated to death, the whole world seems to be interested how it does it, and we've had some wacky analysis i.e., oh, it's all to do with London's ethnic minority children, they're more ambitious, therefore, there's an element of truth in this, oh, it's all to do with gentrification in parts of London. It drives me mad. No, it isn't. It's about better leadership and better teaching and learning, and that's what you need to do. So, a challenge one uh, is, of course, this business of system leadership beyond the school and in the communities of Wales or the communities of London. You won't succeed with the children unless the health agencies, the social uh, agencies, uh, the vulnerable children's agencies are right behind and with the school. And therefore, that slide is about, I think you've had a recent piece of legislation about, and you're ahead of us on this, on, on well-being, I think. And I think that well-being notion, which we don't have in legislation, actually, but the idea, they've come to the idea that they, the system leaders in a borough, in a community, will work together. So if I take the example of the most deprived area of Tower Hamlets, the attendance, average attendance, wait for this, in Tower Hamlet schools is 97%. Now, admittedly, that's partly to do with a, a very aspirant, but very poor Bangladeshi community, largely, that know their best chances, they've come to this country for their children to do better. So they can't help their children off with their homework, but they can send them to school every day. And actually the parents meeting, just to give another statistic, which I think is mind boggling, when they have parents meetings, often have translation of course, again we're in 98%. Somehow those parents believe they have to go to the school. So the power, they don't help as you would help as middle class parents with your children. They don't do that. But boy, they say, if they send the children every day, if they're right behind the school and everything it does, and they attend every meeting they're asked to do, boy oh boy, can you, can you, can you move? But, so therefore that's that system of community workers in, in I'm talking about inner London. So therefore the mentors, the coaches, the, the teaching assistants come largely from the community. It's a sad fact, isn't it, that still we have our teachers who don't live in the community often. It won't be the case in Wales, but they don't often live in the community. But a but lot of the adults live in the community. So the second challenge, I better be careful, Steve's gone, so we can, we can say something about the Welsh Government or the English Government, is, is, the, is the Janus face. Or you're facing both ways, and I feel for your lead, leaders in the room a bit this, because in England, let's, let's be very critical about England and assume that Wales 
does it much better, but we have a national education policy that does in fact pit school against school in a local bid for pupils. I think you have strict catchment areas, but in London you can go anywhere, go anywhere. And with a transport system, personally, the tube is full of, I think it's we're risky, the tube is full every morning with 11 year olds going to a school, not in their borough because they've chosen, because they've looked at the Estin or Ofsted reports, they've looked at the outcomes and they've decided they're going to go there. So local bid for pupils funding and resource and of course compares their performance. You've got, I think, lead tables as well, but we've got lead tables, benchmarking, however a group does, because our government believes in a sense, which you don't, quite, quite rightly, in, in a sort of market system, really, that the parents are the consumers, they're entitled to have the most information, and they can choose the best. And frankly, if nobody wants to go to that school, we'll close it, because there it is. And that's, that's in our essence, a very ruthless market approach. But on the other hand, our government demands this collaborative exercise. It demands the horizontal line as well. It said you, could, you, you should do it. You should be system improvement. But the tip, so my question is, are competition and collaboration, I don't know how much, I don't know how competitive Wales schools are. Maybe they're not. Compe competition, of course, can be a good thing. Because if it's benchmarking across and you see those schools performing much better with the same children, then you ought to roll your sleeves up and say, right, well, if that's the case, we'll, com we'll compete in the sense it shows what can be done. So it's not a an evil, but driven to excess it can be. So are competition and collaboration, it may be not an issue for Wales, but are they polar opposite? Well, we say, we've invented a new phrase, so it's called uh, Competition, right? You like that? I used to call it collaborative competition, and they all to look at me, and I said no. I got this idea actually from the you'll be interested the institute on London's university who were forever competing for overseas students because they were lucrative, aren't they, in income terms? I think. And in the end, they realised if they pulled their resources and went to particularly Asia and and said come to London. Um, to train and then it will be, be you build a bigger cake and you could all have a bigger slice so when I say when I say I think that's my answer it's the Mary Berry theory of uh, uh, school improvement <laughs> my favorite cake Victoria sandwich but you take the point if in your region or, or area you build the bigger capacity then there will be a bigger slice for all well anyway the London schools are bought into this they're convinced there is a bigger slice for all and they somehow manage, though we are very careful if we send a system leader to another school, because they've got 32 boroughs, they, they work in a school outside their borough. But that's five minutes away. In fact, they might even live in that borough, so it's easy. We don't often say work in the actual locality because of the competitive element. But that's the way we are. Um, the third challenge is coherence in a system. You're working hard, we've all read the OECD reports, we've all read, in, in, in particular in London, we've worked very closely with the North American systems and Australia and New Zealand to, to try and refine our system. One of the worries about the horizontal line, who provides the glue, who organise, who gets it together, is it, is it, or is it as Debbie will say, is it, is it one of the four, re is it the four regions, is it the local authorities, is it the Welsh Institute? Because actually, it's all very well saying, well, go and visit each other and go and have some joint practice development and all the system leaders. But it has, has to be a framework of organization, of the dating agency, the glue. Somebody has to put it together. Um, so that's an issue that I think we, we, we've dealt with uh, quite well. I'm always worried about um, the central coherence and you're always worried about the schools who always get who join the, all the clubs and gets the best of everything and other schools who perhaps because they've kept their heads down are not well connected but it's our job to pick them up and say would you like to have a university partner would you like to join the teaching school alliance would you like to be part of this federation we always say and keep saying and keep saying no isolated schools no isolated schools there's absolutely no excuse in London because you could join six clubs, you know, and many of them do, but no isolated schools. But we do have the worst of all world, do I admit this to you, we do have high performing selfish schools who say, I don't care about Wales or London, I'm, 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 this is my kids, and whatever. 
So we don't like that, and it's very, very rare, but we have it, and we'll always have it, I suppose. Where does accountability lie? I don't quite know. I suppose Estin is your, I, I understand now Estin inspects schools and the, and, the, and the four regions, yes? Um, so where does it lie? But you have to have some accountability. Uh, at the moment, uh, of course, it lies with the individual school in London, but of course, Ofsted keeps threatening to inspect all these collaboratives as well. So you get a double inspection, whether it'll ever happen, I doubt whether Ofsted has the capacity, inspecting you as a school and inspecting you as part of a collaborative. But that's an interesting phenomenon. And of course, the vertical line is still the vertical line. We still have, if you like, top-down curriculum, uh, testing, um, performance indicators, those are described nationally, aren't they? We can try and influence, and inspection, they still frame school. Sadly, I think, I'm sure Estin is, Estin is free of this accusation, but sadly, I think the best, the quickest way to change behavior in London schools is to change the offset framework. And there are good things about that. You put greater emphasis on moral, social, cultural education, then they'll respond. So it's sad that we have to do that. But all I'm saying, the vertical line is important, and it does, in fact, look at behavior, but we can do a lot on the horizontal line. Can informed professionalism replace informed? I'm doing governments, the English government, the great uh, compliment of calling their policies informed prescription. You notice that, I mean, and of course in Wales, I'm sure it is informed prescription because you've had all those reports, um, you worked it through together. Uh, but we're talking, aren't we, together, in the school led system about informed professionalism, the, the, the people speaking to professionals, obviously with an eye on the vertical line because you have to know the rules of the game. Professor Tim Brighouse has a lovely line when he talks to our schools and he talks about setting the climate and making the weather. And he said, it's you as school leaders who set your own climate and make your weather. And he says, yes, of course, there'll be hurricanes coming from the Department for Education. Yes, of course, there'll be storms. And yes, of course, there'll be explosions. And that's part of the vertical line. I'm being brutal because maybe there are, I don't know, there are lovely areas of weather coming from central government. But you take my point that, that he says very strongly, it's the horizontal line you make your own weather. You don't wait for governments to tell you how to work all it together. You make your own weather, you set your own, the principals in the room will recognize their job is to make their weather set the climate, whatever. Of course, you don't ignore uh, the national framework because that's a, because that's a, a democratic right of any government to set a national expectations. You don't ignore that, but, but you work on your own climate. Okay, last two or three, I'm going to give Debbie some time here. Um, so, we believe in open and connected leadership. Um, uh, the biggest sin you can do is not be able, in other words, I suppose it's like the old challenge, uh, what did you do in the Great War? What will you do for London? What will you do for Wales? I'd be saying that at every meeting to you principals, what will you do for Wales? Yes, we know what you'll do for your school. Yes, we know what you'll do for community. What will you do for Wales? And I think that's a great challenge. And if London can do it with two and a half thousand schools, you can do it with less than two thousand. So what's your contribution to Wales? Like go back and uh, that's your homework for tomorrow. Have a senior leader. What will we do for Wales? Uh, okay, so that's the idea. Outward facing, mutual challenge, championing best practice. That's what we'll do for Wales. We'll champion the very best practice. And we'll secure, of course, excellent outcomes for our pupils. All this stuff is all predicated on the best outcomes. And I mean the best outcomes in not just in tests and examinations, I mean in well-being, in life skills. I mean the very best outcomes, which, of course, you've had several literature and reports on. What we call purposeful networking and influencing. A few years ago, I had to take them what I was a bit nervous of what I call social tourism. Social tourism? You know, well, we'll, we'll visit, we'll visit. I don't mind going up into deepest West Wales and having a look, good day out, a bit of social, I'm being rude. But you take my point. Uh, we don't want, we want purposeful networking, high focus, excellence visits, working with professional and colleagues and other public services. Don't forget system leadership across the community to develop the most effective leadership system. So I think we've got work towards that. And of course, as you have in your literature, 
the idea of professional learning across the system. Uh, thinking, creativity, innovative approaches work across the system. So I'll, those will be our three mantras. And when I say leadership, I don't just mean principles. I'm, it's very important, isn't it, for our middle leaders to be absolutely engaged on this senior leaders. And in a sense, of course, all teachers are leaders. But I, I mean leadership at all levels, being outward, purposeful, and indulging in professional learning. But of course, the Institute of Education is part of its remit is to offer that professional learning. They have to have the opportunities for professional learning. They have to relearn. We work very closely with London Institute University College to provide that extra research and learning. And we try and make sure that every collaborative federation teaching school, the teaching schools have to have a university partner. So all of them are plugged in plugged into the practice uh, so that what we call, and you call the same thing, evidence-informed practice, we don't just say, watch me teach this, aren't I great? It's all about sharing our evidence-informed practice. But we do need, in your case, the Institute of Wales to help us do that, and the Institute of London in our case. Okay, just the final two, and then I'll hand over to David to respond. We like this particular one. We're always looking for literature and part of the example is when we have leaders meetings, they've all got to bring a, a think piece, a bit of learning with them. Might be a tiny, I read this, I saw this in an article about, I'm part of, the, a lot of them are part of the connected classrooms across the world. I saw this, I read that, I want to bring it to the table. Now, Daniel Goldman, of course, the great author of Emotional Intelligence, and American, of course, or, um, wrote this about organizations generally and said the, the hidden driver of excellence is for systems to focus. They have to choose what they're going to focus, but they must focus. And so we speak the language of inner over outer. I'm not saying you should do. Inner because that's your, your guiding values. You wouldn't be in education together if you didn't want the very best for our children and young people. That's our moral purpose, our passion, our driver. That's why we're leaders. That's why we're teachers. But then there's the other focus. He says the connections to people in our lives, we mean by that in education, we mean the local community. So, so other for us is the local community. But outer is what I've been talking about, a school-led system of improvement. As he says, and I won't go through it all, we need the full range. And he's arguing here, those indifferent to the larger systems within which they operate will be blindsided. In other words, if you don't get your eyes up and look beyond your school and beyond your borough and to the whole of your learning nation, then you will be blindsided and you won't give them. So we talk about all the time, inner, other, outer. For us, it's, uh, for us, it's the school, the community and London, inner, other, outer. We have, we're fortunate, we have, of course, um, a mayoral system with lots of money. And though they're not in charge of education, they'd dearly like to be, well, Boris would have liked to have been, but he's got other things to do now, hasn't he? I saw he was in Wales the other day, God help you all, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> but Sadiq Khan has taken, we work closely, and, and the mayor's office has something called the Gold Club, so that you can join the Gold Club, and that's a way of saying this is where the best practice is, the Gold Club. It's got an excellence fund, lots of money, so that's lucky. You can go and make a bid and say, can we have money? For this school, that yes, you can. There's the money you have to report, of course, and lots of promises paid by them. So we're lucky we have a high-profile mayoral system who are bidding all the time to take over the whole education system. But I don't think the department will let them have it. Well, especially now it's a Labour mayor. I'm sure they won't let them have it. And the last slide, um, and I just think this is a, a, a nice way of, of saying what we can all do together. Um, Interpreting leadership in, 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 at every level in the broadest sense, that's the longest lever. I like that. It won't translate to Welsh. I like alliteration. might be hopeless in Welsh. I don't know how you translate the long, you will know, the long lever of leadership, but it rolls off the tongue. The three, so we call it the three L's, the long lever of leadership. We'll reach everywhere. That's the leadership strategy. Obviously, we want, we're very interested in the development of our future leaders, in talent management, we call it. We're all trying to say, can you spot a future head teacher after three years? And well, we have all these debates about all the schools having to have their talent management strategies. Very important. So talent management, not only being great leaders, but great future leaders and system leaders. But I like this line under this. It is impossible to get a system perspective if we only stay at home. Now, 
you, it's for you to say how many of your leaders in Wales are staying at home. And they may be doing a very good job at home, let me not be. But, but that's the issue, isn't it? You can't do it. And of course, I accept the, the limitations of geography and transportation systems. But where there's a will, we can get what I think. I love this cross-connected leadership experience. This is written 10 years ago by Michael Fullman. And of course, the strap line, the objective must always be we transform our system so that progressive cultures flourish. We're not in the business, are we, of uh, making baked beans or but we're in the business of making and changing lives. The most precious contribution we'll make to our future society. Nothing can be more important than that. And therefore it deserves, I think, every effort we make to give every child the greatest chance and the greatest opportunities. And I'm proud that we've managed to do that to a large extent. There's always more to, more to do. Every time on the tube, I hear that phrase, mind the gap, which we pinched. The gap between our schools in performance, the gap between groups of pupils in our schools. And all the time I cringe, I think, mind the gap. Although London stats are twice better than the national average, never mind you worry, don't you, school leaders, of the gaps in the system between schools and children. Thank you very much for listening. Um, thank you for the opportunity for coming um, here. And um, never easy to follow somebody like David. But firstly, to thank you, David, um, for taking us through such a clear and comprehensive um, journey through some of the lead thinking. But also, you um, and myself are sitting there feeling some confidence that we're actually um, the glue um, and leading um, both our regions, hopefully, in, in the right direction. Um, can I put it Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I've just been tasked just for um, uh, just a few minutes, really, to give you a bit of a whistle stop tour um, around some of the aspects that David covered in his presentation. And in my role as um, the managing director within the Southeast region, um, covering five local authorities. And just really covering from um, some of the key themes um, that we've just heard about the things that strike a particular chord with the work that we do um, around the self improvement system uh, within the Southeast and, and within the Education Achievement Service. And there are three things really that I just wanted to touch upon, and many of these things have been the driver for us, particularly drawing back to what Steve talked around the capacity building element that's been within the regions for two years. Um, and things that we've started um, to experiment with, um, with our schools, with our leaders, um, with our governors, with, with the wider uh, school community. And the first um, one of those is really to acknowledge that we do find ourselves in a new landscape um, in Wales, and certainly within the work of the regions, which is still relatively um, a new concept um, for us in Wales. Um, one of those, um, and one of the things that we particularly developed in our region, is the ability to be the glue, um, I like that word, um, that helps the weaker schools um, to improve, but also enable our best schools to become world class and to get out more and to start looking um, at what's going on around them. One of the other things um, that we hold very close um, to, to our hearts um, across the region is that ability to secure that collective moral purpose. We're nowhere near the end of our journey, it's very new um, for us, but when that builds trust and the professional relationships. And although we're not perfect in any, in any aspect of that, we've certainly come uh, a long way. Um, we now feel all right to look in, which, which you talked about, and um, forward thinking um, as, as we go forward. Um, one of the major drivers for us are the relationships that we have with our school leaders. Um, we call them our partners, our challenge advisor partners, and the way in which they help us to drive um, the innovative thinking that we have across our region. We've worked very closely um, with um, Trinity St. David, and particularly with Professor Peter Rabet, um, to enable us to develop um, our research so that we remain um, forward thinking ahead. Um, of the curve, but again, the curve keeps changing, so we have to keep changing um, where, we, where we go. Um, I just wanted to touch upon some of the things that um, 
David talked about the setting in the context, particularly of the work um, that we do within our region. We've revisited our strategy for the self-improvement system and we've given ourselves some key challenges, particularly over the next 12 months, um, to continue to shift um, how we move towards the system, but making sure we bring everybody with us, so no isolated parties um, within our community. Everyone we feel very strongly needs to feel connected um, and, and to see their place um, within the system as, as we move and we shift. Um, obviously, um, with all uh, system change, there are inevitable risks. These are risks and words um, that actually came from our head teacher strategy group and our governance um, strategy group across the region. But um, we move quite quickly from the risks. Um, there's, there's nothing there that any of you, I, I suppose, would disagree with. You can see competition there. Um, which, which uh, David alluded to in his um, presentation. But we very quickly moved across the region to what the benefits could be for us, um, for us as a region, for local authorities, for schools, and ultimately for our learners um, in South East Wales. Um, we, alongside the research um, that, that, that we have um, as, a, as a region, we work very closely with partners. I think David talked about six professional learning areas. Um, we have quite a structured approach um, to how we drive and we help to facilitate the self-improvement system across our region. And we have, you can see the um, five areas that we've developed and that we all sign up to um, as the, um, the, the areas that we will continue to facilitate and, and share best practice through with our schools. And every one of our schools would connect with um, the, the process that we have there. The characteristics of the eight types of activity that we, that we have across the region um, of A to C. And David mentioned professional learning, sharing, peer review, peer mentoring, and um, all of those drive um, the system that we have across um, the South East uh, Wales region. And all of our five local authorities have complete ownership, um, and we have developed this system together. And um, you can see some of the practice with sharing the excellent teacher programmes that we have in place. And the peer supporting challenge is a relatively new element of our work where we engage our, our best schools, and don't like that too, but our best schools within the system to help um, and, and lead schools um, that need that support from time to time um, across the region. I don't, um, this isn't designed for you to be able to read the detail, it's far too small, um, but I just wanted to show you the concept. We call this our rugby ball, very, uh, very thematic um, in Wales. Um, but but this, this diagram is constantly evolving. Obviously, I can, I can send this out to any of you um, after this, this event. But it just, it just shows you how we build up everything that we do within the southeast region. That outer circle, the, the amber colour, and we populate that with the types of activities that we enable our schools um, to facilitate with each other in against each of those eight key elements um, of our group that we held, held close. Um, obviously, we have many challenges um, that still remain um, for us. It's inevitable. We still have to work hard to get the buy-in from everyone within the system. And we've done a lot of work, particularly with governors um, in our schools, to get them to understand that there are benefits from, from both sides of this work. Um, but we also remain very flexible in our thinking, um, but we hold firm to the vision um, that we have. Um, and we've worked hard to develop um, some early quick wins, and we found that that um, is very positive. I think just to sum up um, in David's words, um, I think I'd speak for everyone within um, our region, particularly that we remain um, an outward looking, forward thinking, um, and we feel very confident that we have the collective leadership within our schools um, to be able to drive change at every level, um, particularly at our local level in the first instance. But we feel that what do we do for Wales? Um, that's a good question. And we feel that we work um, very closely with our colleagues in Welsh Government, particularly our colleagues within um, the other authorities and regions. 
and hopefully that we have a, a, a role to play in contributing to um, the wider system development. Thank you very much. So I am absolutely delighted in the time <laughs> for uh, this particular little one minute because um, there's other things we've been talking about here. We've talked about the power of collaboration and David was talking about the importance of purposeful networking. And in fact, after refreshment break, we're going to have a talk about um, networks, school networks. So this is an ideal opportunity to let you in on a secret. We're going to be doing some network challenges through the refreshment time and during the lunch time. And before you arrive here today, I have secreted away under every single chair in this room a little envelope. So I'd like you to go that envelope and back. <laughs> Feel free to open the envelope up, that's fine. And this is your network challenge. What you'll find is a little sheet that says human bingo. And ladies and gentlemen, you will be doing a human bingo during the course of the refreshment break. So, all you need to do is talk to as many people as possible. See if you can put a name in each of the boxes. And just in order to encourage you and give you some kind of incentive to take part in the networking challenge, which is clearly very important, there are the prizes. Yes! <laughs> so um, if you if you're one of the first to win the bingo, then you will receive one of the publications that we have here. We've got um, a book about participation, which you can use with people voice within your schools, filled full of useful methods. Don't, but don't worry if you don't get there first, we do also have chocolate prizes, fair trade chocolate. So I'm going to finish there and let you know that now the refreshments will be starting.